When you're designing, a lot of the times you want to hide something, either that's an icon or an image or some paragraph of a part of a text or something like that, but you don't want to delete it permanently, you just want to hide it for the time's sake or you want to use it in some other scenario and that's where the masks come in handy. Now, rather than deleting the file, masks are non-destructive, which means that you can use them later in some other project or at other point, uh, points of the project. So here is how masks work. So just imagine you want to include an image and maybe I want to use an ellipse. I will hold my shift key to draw an ellipse and maybe I can create it to be 210 width to 10 pixels for the width and the height. And let me place it right here in the center. And maybe we can remove the border and just so that you can see it, maybe I can include this light gray for the fill color. And I want to include my image here. How can I do this is simply I can drag my image and drop it inside and here you can see that the image is now inside of the circle and it is masked using that circle shape. Now because we are using masks and masks are non-destructive editing that means that I can reposition this image however I want inside of this circle which means inside of the masks. So how can I do that I can simply double click inside you can see the bounds of the image and I can hold my shift key and I can simply move it right here if I want to. I can even increase its size. I can either hold my shift key or I can hold shift alt and click in one of the corners to increase the size like so. And I can reposition that image however I want. Maybe I want to position it here. I can even rotate it so I can hover to whichever one of uh, these corners and I can rotate the image as well. Or you can simply click in one of these dots and you can reposition the image like so. And as I said, you can place it wherever you want and you can reposition it that way. Now, it's easy now for me to move it and later on down the line, if I want to replace this image and include some other image, for example, I can simply drag and drop that image inside and you can see that the original image name will be the name of my image. So if I hit Control Z to come back, you can see this name. And when I include this image inside, you can see now it has changed to this name. I can simply click right here if I want to unmark it for export because immediately when you include images inside of Adobe XD, they will be automatically marked for export because XD knows that you have to later on export those images for developers to use later. And I can do the same for this one. I can rotate it like so. I can double click in to jump inside of this image. I can hold my shift, alt and left click to increase it. And for example, if I want to use this as my avatar image, for example, you can click somewhere outside and now you can move this mask like this small circle. You can reduce its size. So for example, I can hold my shift key and reduce its size like so. But if I want at any point to jump back inside, I can simply double click and I can increase or decrease the size of this image as I already showed you before. Now let me quickly show you how the masks work when you want to create a button. So let me quickly create a button. I will use a rectangle. Maybe I can click 20 for the corner radius and let's use for example 500 width 150, make it nice and big. And I will remove the border color and for the fill color let's use some nice color. So for example maybe something like this or maybe we can even go a bit lighter for example something like this and now let's click on our text tool click somewhere inside and click for example edit and I can hit Control A to select it I can use some other font later for example maybe I can use 40 and maybe I can change it here to semi bold or use bold quite simply and I can click right here to select it to be white and I can simply position it right here in the center and right here in the center as well. Let me double click right here, type this BTN and I can select these two, hit control G to group them and call this button. Now I will simply drag and drop one icon, which is a PNG. I will drop it right here. I always recommend that you use SVGs for the icons, but I will simply use this for demonstration purposes. So maybe I want to drag it like so, position it somewhere around here, for example, and simply use this color. It really doesn't matter for this example. So now we have this button and I will simply double click right here and call it icon.
and I will include it inside of my button like so. So just imagine you want to use this button in one instance, but you want to use this button without this icon and you want to animate it later. How can you do that? You can simply create a mask. So you can simply double click uh, right here on this button and simply hit Control D to make a duplicate. And I'll double click right here and call this one a mask. And I will drag this mask just above my icon select both of them right click and use mask with shape you can also use this shortcut which is shift Control m or shift command m if you're on a mac and it will mask them now you can see it really uh, didn't change that much i'll simply double click right here call this a mask once again and if i click right here you can see that nothing has changed but if i change this color and now if i move this button you can see how it is masking right now. So when I zoom in a little bit closer, you can see that the mask is covering this part of our icon, but this part remains visible. So it's really simple if you want to animate this later, you just have to move this mask out of the way and you can see that now the icon stays outside of our mask. So when I click somewhere outside, you cannot see the icon anymore. But when I click on my mask, and I can extend it all the way to here. Now you can see this icon and now this will come in handy later on when you start animating your designs. So perhaps you want to uh, make this uh, to be clicked state. So perhaps when somebody clicks on this edit, this icon is going to appear. When they click somewhere outside, it's going to disappear. And the easiest way to do this is with the mask. So you can simply create two states using components and you can jump back and watch component video and you can animate this later on and then you can show it to your client or your users and everything will be um, easy for them to understand because you are using non-destructive methods using masks but you are simply hiding not deleting in the next video i'm going to show you sort of a cheat sheet with all adobe xd's shortcuts and some of them are really important for you to learn because they're going to speed up your workflow dramatically and i really recommend that you check them out but if you ever used adobe products before so for example photoshop or illustrator a lot of these shortcuts will be familiar to you, but if you're new to this design world and Adobe products, especially Adobe XD, I really recommend that you check out that video because in it you have this cheat sheet that you can download and use wherever you want. Uh, if you want to get reminded about some shortcuts, you can easily jump inside that file and simply look for those shortcuts because it will uh, dramatically improve your workflow and your speed. So I'll see you there.